Hi everyone, it's Rio CloudSync. In today's video, we'll be focusing on identity protection within Microsoft Entry ID. If you'd like to follow on in today's video, you'll need to be either a global administrator or a security admin. On the left-hand service blade, where we see protection, we want to select identity protection. This will take us to our identity protection dashboard. Before we begin, let's first understand what Microsoft Entry ID protection is. Well, the main purpose of Entry ID protection is to one, detect, two, investigate, and three, remediate identity-based attacks. And this is all included in your Microsoft Entry ID P2 license, as well as Microsoft Entry Suite. On the left-hand side, where we see protect, you can see that Entry ID protection is broken down into two categories, one being user risk, and two being sign-in risk. If we start off with user risk, this is the likelihood of a user account being compromised based on an algorithm such as low, medium and high. Sign-in risk is based around authentication attacks such as password spray attacks. And we can create policies around these two detection types. If we start off with user risk, we can select the assignment type, one being all users, two being individuals or Microsoft 365 security groups, and we've also got the option to whitelist or exclude. We can define what risk levels we're trying to detect or identify, ranging from low, medium and high, and the access controls around that. Albeit if we're blocking access, i.e. restricting um, access or allowing access, but requiring a password change. If we look at sign-in risk policy, same principle applies. We can scope out the users within this given policy, albeit if it be all users or individuals or security groups. We can once again define that, that criteria of risk levels, such as low, medium and high, and we can start deciphering the access controls. For sign-in risk, it slightly differs, where we can either block access, which remains the same, or allow access but require multi-factor authentication for that two-factor approach. However, in today's video, it's all around conditional access and creating these policies within conditional access because we have a bit more granularity when we do use the likes of conditional access. Also, these legacy policies, which we like to call user risk policies and signing risk policies, will be deprecated by 1st of October 2026. So it's all, always great to stay ahead of the curve and at the forefront of technology and try and implement these policies before that end of life um, date comes around. So if we were to navigate to conditional access, you can type in conditional access or down the left hand service pane under protection, you can scroll to conditional access. This will take us to our conditional access uh, blade where we can select policies. And this is where we're going to create a new conditional access policies. And I think what's, what's worth a note is identity protection is not just based on, you know, online uh, methods of attack. It's also offline. It can be auto-generated through heuristic algorithms. It can be expert generated through Microsoft's uh, unique defense team. And the alerts can also be end user generated. And there's a variety of different detection types which Microsoft picks up, such as atypical travel, impossible travel, and uh, leak credentials if you're using a password or um, password hash authentication through uh, Entry Connect, for example. There's a whole load of detection types we're looking for, but the conditional access policy is here to enforce actions based on what we identify and be able to go through that process of remediation as well as investigation. So if I was to create a new policy, and for this policy, we need to give it a name. In, for this policy in particular, I'm going to call this one um, sign-in risk. So we're looking for those authentication-based attacks, right? I.e. the likes of password spray. For assignment, similar to in which we saw in um, uh, identity protection itself with the, the, the sign and risk policy, we can target all users, we can select uh, specific security groups, we can exclude users. For this one, we're just going to select all users. Target resources, I'm going to include all cloud apps. You can decipher uh, individual SaaS applications, it's totally up to you, but best practice is always just to select all cloud apps unless you've got a particular reason to exclude. And then conditions. The conditions is what determines what type of risk um, we're trying to identify. 
one being user risk or two being sign and risk. For this particular one, we're looking at sign and risk. So we're going to select sign and risk and we're going to select configure on the sign and risk and we're going to decipher what type of um, risk level we're looking for. Uh, for this particular risk, uh, risk um, policy, we're going to look for medium and high and we're going to select done. We then need to put some access controls around this. Okay, with sign and risk in particular, I'm going to uh, require multi-factor authentication. Okay, we can also um, select um, require authentication strength where maybe we want to look at um, enforcing a particular authentication method such as Windows Hello for Business, Fido to pass keys, uh, the authenticator app with number matching, however you want to go about it. But for simplicity, we're just going to require multi-factor authentication. And we're not only going to um, require multi-factor authentication, we're also going to associate this with a session control where we're going to look at the sign-in frequency and we're going to change this to every time. So every time a given user tries to access a, uh, an online application where their risk level is either medium or high, then they're going to be requested to, to run through the process of multi-factor authentication each and every time. You can set a periodic re-authentication time period, but like I said, for simplicity, we're just going to do it every time they try and access a given app. We want, then want to select yes. And then once more, we can either enable the policy or we could put the policy in report only. It will, of course, give you a policy tip to say, you know, don't lock yourself out, whitelist either a break dash glass account or one of your global administrators uh, for testing purposes. But of course, if we're going to put it in report only anyway, we can press create. And then, of course, the policy is created and it's created and it's in report only for, for a period of 90 days in which after such time it will be enforced. There is also an option over here for insights and reporting where we can actually simulate what that conditional access policy um, uh, would, 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 would do if it was enforced or, or was enabled. Alternatively, we can look at the Microsoft Entra sign-in logs and uh, filter via the, the conditional access policies within there and see the enforcement actions and what would have happened if the, the policy was enabled. So that's sign-in risk. So if I was to create a new policy for user risk now, so if I type in user risk, uh, we could put policy there. Once more, we go through that scope of assignment, all users, target resources, all cloud apps and conditions. But instead of selecting sign and risk this time, we're going to select user risk and we're going to select configure, uh, medium and high. OK, and then the access controls uh, from this perspective, either uh, we want to block access because, of course, there's a likelihood the, the user account is compromised by a threat actor or grant access but require a password change, for example. You know, this, this is an option, this is recommended by Microsoft, but of course, with conditional access, there's a lot of flexibility than the legacy policies of identity protection. I've been press um, yes. We're gonna keep the session, session controls as is, and we're going to just uh, turn on this policy or keep it in audit mode uh, once more. So once we've created both these policies, like I said, you can go into the insights and reporting blade and look at what those policies would have done if they were, were actually enabled at that given time. Um, the prereq for insights and reporting is to create a log analytics workspace and send this log data to that log, log analytics workspace to be able to uh, look and look at the, the the visual reports within the conditional access blade. Um, so all you need to do is go into diagnostic settings and uh, filter out what you know uh, sign and risk levels you you want to uh, send to that um, particular storage area. And then insights and reportings will be made available for yourself to to leverage. Um, but yeah, this was just a quick video on identity protection and some of the you know the best practices around conditional access. And uh, once more that that deprecation date or 1st of October 2026 for, for identity protection uh, based policies. Any questions, please do let me know. Thank you very much.